I'm Christina and welcome to Baking with Chickens, the show where I bake using eggs from my backyard chickens. And today I'm going to show you how to make these really amazing apple cider caramel cookies that I invented using apple cider caramels. Mm, stick to the roof of your mouth in like the best way. Yes. I'm gonna show you how to make these cookies using real apple cider, and I'm gonna explain to you the difference between apple cider and apple juice that most people don't know. Mr. Baking with Chickens bought the wrong thing at the store. I was a victim of oh, labeling. Oh, stop complaining. You should it's know not better. Apple cider. Now you know. Well, okay. I'm so excited to share this recipe with you. Let's go. following along, grab the recipe in the description and the link below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. Mr. Baking Chicken says this cookie is so good that I have to make sure I describe it properly to you. It is crispy and crunchy on the outside and it's rolled in this coarse sugar. You can see the sugar here on the edges that gives it its little crunch. And then in the center, it's nice and soft and gooey and chewy. And it also has a pool of apple cider caramel on top. There's apple cider syrup in the cookie and it's made with apple cider caramel. So you've got double the apple cider action going on and there's my secret ingredient that I added it to the cookie that takes it from a really good cookie to a freaking great cookie. Yes. I can't even talk because my mouth is stuck. The first thing we're gonna do is make the boiled apple cider syrup. You can make this ahead of time and refrigerate it and use it for later, but it only stores for about a week. The first step of this recipe is to make the boiled apple cider syrup. You're gonna pour in all of this apple cider and then just boil it on the stove until it reduces down to about an eighth of the volume. You're gonna wanna make sure you have at least three quarters of a cup of syrup because that's how much you're gonna need to make both the caramels and the cookies in this recipe. Pour it into a glass jar and let it come to room temp. You can use it right away in the recipe or you can store it in the fridge for up to a week. The difference between apple cider and apple juice is that apple cider is raw and unfiltered and when you buy it from the store, it's a little bit cloudy. So it's going to be kind of that apple cider color, but it's going to be cloudy and not translucent like this. So this is labeled apple cider but it's actually apple juice. It's just the name, it's marketing. So what I learned after going down a Google hole is that most states don't have any laws about the differentiating between apple cider versus apple juice. Anything could be called apple cider. And even the company Martinelli's said that there's no difference between their apple juice and apple cider, but there is, and I'm gonna show you why. Apple cider has all of the fruits, like the pulp and the raw stuff and like that natural pectin that gets filtered out and pasteurized and boiled out with juice. Here's the apple juice. So see how it's so liquidy in here? This is boiled down from an entire container of that. And no matter how much I boil it, it's still very liquidy. And then here is the boiled down apple cider. You can see it's almost more like a jelly right? And the reason why is as I'm cooking this down, the natural pectin that is still in the raw unfiltered apple bits cooks down and it turns into this. So because I'm putting in apple cider syrup, into my cookie dough, that's gonna be the replacement for a liquid. And I don't want the liquid to be too thin because if it's too thin, you're gonna get the wrong consistency for the cookie. If you can't find apple cider, you can absolutely use apple juice in a pinch. It's gonna taste fine. No, it won't. Get the cider. <laughs> for these cookies, you're gonna be making caramels. Now, don't be afraid. You can do this. I have failed so many caramels in the past. I followed Bigger Boulder Baking's apple cider caramel recipe and they worked out Perfectly. For the second part of this recipe, we're gonna make apple cider caramels. First step, you're gonna pour in your one cup white sugar, half cup brown sugar, half teaspoon cinnamon, half cup unsalted butter, one third cup heavy cream, two third cup of your apple cider syrup, and two teaspoons of flaky sea salt. You're going to heat this all on medium low heat, stir it together until it's melted and combined, and then you're gonna attach your candy thermometer. Make sure the bottom of that thermometer doesn't touch the bottom of the pan. Now here comes the hard part. 
Just let it simmer and don't stir it. Resist the urge to stir. Just let it simmer and boil until it comes to temp. And you're looking for this to come to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the perfect temperature for caramel. Immediately take it off the heat and pour it into your prepared pan lined with parchment paper, and it helps to spray it with a little bit of oil so the caramel won't stick. Let your caramel cool in the pan. You can help accelerate the cooling by putting it in the fridge. Cold caramel is easier to handle. While we're waiting for that caramel to cool, we're gonna start making part three of this recipe, the cookies. First step, we're gonna mix all the dry ingredients together. The one and a quarter cups flour, a quarter cup rolled oats, one teaspoon baking soda, half tablespoon cornstarch, half teaspoon coarse salt, a quarter teaspoon cinnamon, one eighth teaspoon nutmeg, and my secret ingredient that makes these cookies extra awesome, half tablespoon finely chopped rosemary. This is my secret ingredient. It just takes these cookies from good to freaking great. It gives it this herbaceousness and kind of cancels out some of that sugary sweetness from the apple cider. It's optional, but I highly recommend it. Finely chop this rosemary so that it goes into the dry ingredients. Add the rosemary into your dry ingredients, stir it all together, and then set it aside while we work on the wet ingredients. Put your one third cup butter into the bowl of your stand mixer, add in your half cup sugar and one third cup of brown sugar, and then using the paddle attachment of your stand mixer, mix it together until it's smooth and creamy. And then we're gonna add in our one egg. Thank you to my chicken burrito berry for this egg. Don't thank me, thank my butt. Mix the egg in until it's nice and smooth. Half a teaspoon vanilla extract, and two tablespoons of that beautiful apple cider syrup. Don't forget to taste some. Mix it until it's nice and smooth and creamy again. And then you're gonna add in your dry ingredients. Mix it on low speed so that you don't get a big puff of clouds. Just enough until it's all stirred, don't over mix. And then I'm gonna scrape the dough out of this and into a smaller bowl so that I can cover it and put it into my fridge to chill for one hour. This will help make the dough much better and let the flavors meld together. And later, I'm gonna show you how I came up with these cookies and how it went from these to this. While the dough is chilling in the fridge, let's prep the caramel. I'm gonna take this cold caramel out of the fridge and I'm going to use the small cookie cutters to cut out little circles that I'm gonna put on top of the warm cookies later. Cold caramel is easier to handle. If it's room temp or it's warm, it's gonna start getting really sticky and impossible to pull off the parchment paper. So if you have to, pop it in the freezer, get it cold, and then put it back in and take it out as you need. Chickens love apples and it's really good for them. But did you know apple seeds have cyanide in them? Just tiny amounts. Whenever I feed my chickens apples, I have to take the core and the seeds out and make sure they don't get any seeds because of the cyanide. So using a one and a half tablespoon cookie scoop, I'm gonna scoop out the chilled cookie dough and roll it in this coarse sugar. Place it onto your baking sheet and then using your fingers, just gently flatten it so it looks more like a hockey puck shape and then place your balls about two to three inches apart. These are gonna get pretty big and spread as you bake them, so give them plenty of room. And then using your thumb, just indent the center of that dough a little bit. It's not gonna be like a thumbprint cookie and it will kind of bake off, but it will give it a nice flat surface for your caramel to sit on as it melts. You're gonna wanna chill the dough in the freezer while you preheat the oven. This is going to stiffen the dough and make for a better baked cookie. Bake in the oven at 350 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes. Turn the pan halfway through baking so it will evenly bake on both sides. With any extra caramel, you can just wrap them up like this into little candies. I wrap them up in wax paper because wax paper is best. Parchment paper, it's gonna stick all over the place. It sticks a little bit to this too. And store them into the fridge until you're ready to eat. And they come to temp and they get really soft really easily. When your cookies are golden brown, pull them out of the oven and immediately put caramel on top of each of the cookies. The hot cookies will melt the caramel until it's nice and gooey. And then the finishing touch, just a sprinkle of Maldon sea salt.
Yay, it's time for cookie taste testing. So you see this beautiful pool of apple cider caramel. I sprinkled some mulled on sea salt on top. It's gooey in the middle and just slightly crunchy on the outside. Yes, look at that caramel goo. It's perfect. Mmm. Yes, it's perfectly chewy and it sticks to the roof of your mouth in like the best way. And what I love the most about this is my secret ingredient, the rosemary. In my first iterations of these cookies, I didn't put the rosemary and it was really good, but it was too sweet. But the rosemary just gives it an herbaceousness that balances out all that sweet concentrated flavor of the caramel and the cider syrup. And it just gives it this little lift that takes the cookie next level. And it's so good. It's not enough that you can tell that there's a lot of rosemary, but it's there and your cookie's next level. And it's next level because you made it and you made it from scratch from the apple cider syrup to the apple cider caramel to these cookies with your hand chopped rosemary. So good job, freaking delicious cookies. Mm. I hope you enjoy them. I can't even talk because my mouth is stuck. Remember, if you're storing them, these tend to be sticky, so don't store them on top of each other. Keep them in the fridge to keep the caramel hard, otherwise it'll get all gooey and mushed together. And then if you pop them into the microwave for about 10 seconds before you eat them, perfect. So now that we've taste tested this, you can see the difference between the center of these cookies compared to this. So this one was the first sad iteration of this cookie. And like my hot cocoa cookies, I was trying to get the caramel stuffed inside of the cookie so that when you broke it open, you'd get this pool of gooey caramel. And that didn't work out so well. You know, I stuffed it in the center, but the caramel sort of just melted into the cookie dough and out of it and into all over my pan. And it turned into like crispy hard crack so it was kind of like a hard candy caramel, which was delicious, but not exactly what I was looking for. I kind of learned a little bit more and how I could get the caramel into the cookie. So I succeeded there. So with these cookies, the caramel stayed inside a little bit better, but you'll notice that the rise was off. I reduced the amount of baking soda and to baking powder in here because these cookies are too round. And what I wanted was a chewy cookie. They still spilled out the sides and melted into the dough, which wasn't exactly what I was looking for. My final iteration was, I'm like, aha, forget stuffing the cookies. I'm just gonna melt them on top into this beautiful pool and sprinkle them with sea salt. Perfection. Here, let me break these open so you can see the inside this. They're stuffed, but like, eh, not a great cookie, right? And then this one, a little too hard. Look, all of these are delicious, but for the ideal cookie, I wanted to give you the best, most perfect version possible. And that one is this. That's it for this episode. Thank you for watching another episode of Baking with Chickens. And I hope you like this sweater, sweater, sweater weather cookie, apple cider caramel, sweater, sweater weather cookies, apple cider caramel cookies. Sweater weather cookies, apple cider caramel cookies. Easy. I'll see you next time. Buck, buck. <laughs>